Now that we've taken the time to look at the probability of events happening in general, we're going to take some time to look at the probability of multiple events happening. So when we look at this, we have certain terms that are going to be coming up. The first is independent events. Now independent events are when the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of a second event. Example of this normally is used when rolling dice or flipping a coin. Each time you flip the coin, it has the same likelihood of happening. Previous flips does not, do not affect future ones. Now, dependent events is when the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of a second event. For instance, if you knock down a domino and you have a set lined up, that event occurring changes the likelihood of other ones falling down. Now, it doesn't mean that all of them are going to fall down, but the likelihood increases. And last, we have mutually exclusive events. And these are two events that cannot happen at the same time. Exclusive means on their own. Mutually exclusive means each one happens by itself. So we're going to be looking at these as we build on this idea of probability of multiple events. So let's start by getting some practice on identifying these. So, are the following events independent or dependent and explain? So, a fair penny is flipped followed by a fair nickel. Does the result of the penny have any influence on what happens with the nickel? And the answer is no, so these are independent. And the reasoning is, is just that, that one outcome does not have influence on what the other one does. Just because the penny comes up heads doesn't change the fact that the nickel has likely equally likely opportunity for heads or tails. Next, a five is rolled on a fair number cube and you need doubles. Does this first event, the five being rolled, have influence on rolling doubles? And the answer is yes. Since I already have a 5, there is now only one way that I can roll a double, and that is to roll another 5. So the outcome of the first event does influence the outcome of future events. Next, two cards are drawn from a standard deck. They're drawn at the same time. Are the following events mutually exclusive? Is it possible to draw a heart and draw a 7? And going back to our definition of mutually exclusive, two things that cannot happen at the same time, since there is a seven of hearts, these events are not mutually exclusive. And the reasoning is that a seven of hearts exists, so it is possible to do both things at the same time. Next, drawing a diamond and a black card. Are these mutually exclusive events? Well, in a standard deck of cards, you have four suits, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. Hearts and diamonds are red. Uh, spades and clubs are black. So drawing a diamond and drawing a black card cannot happen at the same time. So these are mutually exclusive. Anytime you're looking at multiple things happening and they do not share a t common item, then they are mutually exclusive. It's like having a coin, a single coin, and a $5 bill. You can't, or $5. You cannot have $5 in one coin with U.S. currency. But with a single coin and one dollar, that can happen because we have the presidential dollars, so you'd have this happening. M mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. Now, once we start looking at multiple events happening, we have two different types, and they normally fall under needing these different items that we talked about, independent, dependent, and mutually exclusive or not. The first are AND event probabilities. So AND events is when we need multiple things to happen at the same time. And when we need these multiple things to happen at the same time, the probability of their outcome, if the events are independent, is found by saying the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. 
So with independent events, if each one can happen on its own, the probability of both happening at the same time is the likelihood of each one individually. So example of this. The prob what is the probability of drawing a two and a spade from a deck of cards? So the probability of a two and a spade is equal to the probability of the two times the probability of getting that spade. Probability of the two, there's four of them in the deck, so four out of 52. And the probability of getting a spade, there are 13 of those in the deck, so 13 out of 52. So the probability of getting both of these at the same time is easily computed. 4 out of 52 is 1 13th. 13 out of 52 is 1 4th. So we multiply these together, we get 1 out of 52. So we have a 1 in 52 chance of getting a 2 and a spade at the same time. And what, computing this out into a percentage, that is about 1.9%. Next was the probability of rolling an even number on a fair number cube and flipping a heads on a fair coin. So the probability of even and heads based on the description is the probability of even times the probability of heads. Well, for a number cube, there are three heads, uh, three evens, and three odds, so we have a one in two chance of getting an even. And for a coin, we have heads or tails, so we have a one in two chance there. Probability of rolling an even on a number cube and flipping a heads on a coin is one out of four, or 25%. It would also be the same if we wanted odds and tails or any of the combinations that you can get from those. So probability of multiple events is the probability of each event individually multiplied by each other. Now, let's look at our other type of situation, which I call OR event. Now when we're looking at OR events, we want one item to happen OR another. And these are really helpful if we have mutually exclusive events. So if we have multi mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B is simply the probability of A plus the probability of B. And this is if they are mutually exclusive. Now, the probability of A or B, if the items are not mutually exclusive, is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And this is if not mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive ones are easy. You simply find their individuals and add them together. Now, <clears throat> not mutually exclusive are a little bit harder because we have this overlap area. From the perspective of a Venn diagram, you have event A happening here and event B happening here we don't want to double count what's inside, so we're going to subtract it out of the set. Let's look at a situation. What is the probability of rolling an odd number or a prime number on a fair number cube? So a number cube, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's look at the odds here. Odd numbers are 1, 3, and 5. Now, we're wanting prime numbers also which the primes are 2, 3, and 5. So when we go to compute this, the probability of odd or prime is going to equal probability of odd, there's three of them, so that's half. Probability of a prime number, there's three of those, so that's also half. 
but we need to take out the overlap, and that's 2 of the 6, which is 1 third. So 1 half plus 1 half is 1, minus 1 third is 2 thirds. So this is about a 66.7% chance of rolling either an odd or a prime. We look at the individual occurrences and get rid of their overlap once. Now, was the probability of rolling a number Q a number greater than three or an odd on a fair number cube? So let's regenerate our list. One, two, three, four, five, six. We want a number greater than three. So we would be looking at four, five, and six. Or an odd. That'd be one, three, and five. So the probability of greater than 3 or odd equals, well, greater than 3, there are 3 of them, so that's 1 half. Odd, there's also 1 half. But our overlap, this time it's 1 out of the 6 events. 1 half plus 1 half, of course, is 1. Minus 1 six is 5 six. Now, converting this over into a decimal form, or a percentage form, it's about 83.3% of the time. We're going to have every number a possible solution except the number 2. Probability of multiple events is found on these. Probability of the individual events and whether they are independent, dependent, and or mutually exclusive. So make sure you understand this. We're going to be using as we move forward in our study of probability and statistics. So have these down and ready to use them.